Buck Nutters. It is Wednesday, December 21st, 2016. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Buck Nuts Morning 5 and Change. Yes, it's me again. Dave has decided to take his entire vacation. But we are blessed to be joined this morning by Alex Gleitman, who has woken up early in the Big Apple. Alex, people love my weather updates. I can't see anything right now because it's pitch black outside. I assume it's the same in the Big Apple. Uh, it's, it's actually starting to get a little light out here. Uh, I think we're getting decent weather in the 40s, so not going to complain about the 40s, considering it's been uh, pretty cold of late. So we'll take it here. This little geography lesson. The Gem City is at the westernmost point of the eastern time zone. So I think this is like the first day of December, or excuse me, the first day of winter. So whatever. Let's stick to what we know about. That's football. One of the developments on the recruiting front recently has been Ohio State backing out of a recruitment. Cam Akers has been a name that really has been around since the beginning of uh, this cycle. There was a lot of people who really were pining for J.K. Dobbins and Cam Akers in this class. Now it looks like it's going to be just J.K. Dobbins. Bring us up to speed on how Akers kind of drifted to the background of recruiting here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it's one of those situations where you just have to tip your cap and and congratulate whoever ends up with him at the end. Ohio State, I think, did everything they could. They recruited him from the beginning. They got multiple unofficial visits on the kids' own dime up to campus. Um, he had a great relationship with Tony Alford and Urban Meyer and the staff, and they hosted him for an official visit for the Michigan game, and I think that was kind of, to me, the um, I don't really the thermometer check, I guess you could call it, um, to see, you know, do the Buckeyes really have a chance in this one? I think coming away from that official visit, I think both sides felt that, you know, Ohio State was a great place for Cam Akers to come in and definitely get some playing time right away. Obviously, Mike Weber would be the starting back, but he would be able to get some playing time right away. And, you know, he had a great relationship with the staff, but I think at the end of the day, just a little too far away from home for him. Um, I think he also wanted to go into a situation where he could compete for a starting spot right away. And I think, you know, Akers felt that maybe Florida State and LSU um, and possibly even Ole Miss, I think it's going to be Florida State or LSU. Um, I think he felt those two schools probably offered him uh, more of what he was looking for right off the bat. And I think Ohio State felt that, you know, while they can continue to chase him and maybe make him think about a few things, it's, it's probably a waste of their time and resources at this point in the, in the cycle. Um, they have J.K. Dobbins locked up. I think they feel pretty good about a, a number of backs in the 2018 class, and I think they feel decent about their depth next year. Especially, I mean, if Curtis Samuel comes back, they're going to feel really good about their depth next year. But I think they just felt that at this time they're better off focusing on some other targets that they, they should be paying more attention and giving more resources to as National Signing Day is about, what, five weeks away at this point. So I don't think there was any ill will or anything that happened. I think it was just a case of, you know, not the right fit right now for, for Cam Akers and Ohio State recognizing that and, and being smart and, and using, uh, investing, you know, their time and resources elsewhere. There are times when a name will pop up late, especially when a position has been given, has been given this much uh, interest or effort. But now, don't you think it looks like Dobbins will be the only running back in the class? I do. I mean, I've been told a number of times that Ohio State isn't going to reach with – I don't want to say reach even, because like a, guy, a guy like a Morgan Ellison I think can play at Ohio State. I think he's he's got that, that physical talent and ability. I think it's more like – I hate to say this, but they're really only taking studs for these for these last, you know, right. four, yeah. five, six spots that they have. I mean, they only have so many spots, and they're in on these top-rated kids. They're, they're taking studs. They're not, they're not looking to take – you know, um, a three-star project at this point. So I think, you know, as you said, I think they're, they're probably done at running back, and I think next year they're going to take two, possibly three, depending on how they view Jalen Gill. Let's talk about that. 2018, you've got a story coming out later today about the updated 2018 two, top 247 composite. And I get the sense that they were in early on Brian Sneed. For those who don't know, Sneed is one of the few guys committed in 2018. I get the sense they're higher on him than others and higher on the other running backs in the class, and that may have been the tipping point in backing off of Cam Akers. Let everybody know 
a little bit about Snead, what you know about him in 18, and maybe some other guys, as you were alluding to, who could fill the running back room after 2018. Yeah, well, Brian Snead, I mean, he's a good back in the latest 24-7 sports composite rankings uh, refresh. He's number 53. So, I mean, that's a really nice player you're getting there. I think he's a four-star kid, not a five-star, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, although, you know, it's more five-star talk than four-star talk these days inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's a kid. Uh, he's got great size. I think he's about 6'1", uh, over 200 pounds. I mean, he's he's got great speed. He's got good vision, uh, good cutting ability. I mean, he really impressed at, at Friday Night Lights where he gave his commitment, and he had a, a really nice uh, junior season. So uh, Ohio State's really excited about him, but they definitely want two backs in this class. Obviously, Jalen Gill, Westerville South, uh, you know, he's – He's probably the number one guy on the board as far as skill position goes, and I think he's going to be a Buckeye in the end. But the question is, is he a running back? Is he an H? Is he a wide receiver? Um, you know, he, he could play a variety of positions. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Do they bring him in uh, along with Steve and then call it a day? If they could get another elite back, do they do that? And I think, you know, the, the potential is there. Lorenzo Lingard, a running back from Florida, one of the top backs in the country. I think he's ranked number the number two back in the country he might be right now. Um, he he said Ohio State's his leader right now. He came up for a visit this fall. I mean, obviously, there's a long way to go there and, and getting called a leader um, by a kid from Florida this early in the process. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much thought he put into that. But, I mean, the fact that he visited and, and he's been talking to the coaches a lot, I think that's real. Zanir White is going to have Ohio State in his top four when he releases that, and then he's going to make a commitment. In June, um, right now I expect that, that to be Clemson or UNC. I think those two schools are ahead of Ohio State, but that's another kid who's made multiple visits on his own dime to Columbus. So, you know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be, uh, at least a little bit optimistic that you're in the game there. And I think those are, are the main guys. I think there's a number of other players, um, that Ohio State is going to be in the mix for. I would definitely check out, you know, the article today. It's, it's, it's incredible how many top 100, I mean, top, top I think they're, they're like legitimate landing spots for seven of the top ten prospects in the latest composite, and um, some ridiculous number for the top 100. It, it's it's pretty impressive, and uh, you know I think I think the Buckeyes are, are going to land another outstanding class in 2018 to follow up what might be the best class of all time on paper in 2017. Yeah, I mean the, the train is not going to stop rolling here, as you said, and, and like like I alluded to earlier, make sure you're looking at the site at about 10 o'clock as Alex breaks all that down for you. Here are the two things I would say to everyone if there's fears about the running back position, and I wanted to get your opinion on it. One, I understand J.K. Dobbins was hurt for his senior year, but he said he's 100% healthy. He told Bill Curlick that yesterday. He's going to go to the All-Star game and just sit and watch. Expects to be 100%. J.K. Dobbins is no average running back. In my opinion, he was – this is my opinion – Fortunately or unfortunately, it gets recorded on this show t- usually twice a week. I was I, I like Dobbins as a fit for the team better than Acres. I know most people were on the Acres train. I thought Dobbins to me had the most Ezekiel Elliott like characteristics, and that's another thing about running back recruiting. With Zeke doing what he's doing in the pros and Carlos Hyde doing what he's doing in the pros, they have such great marketing that I don't think recruiting a running back is going to be an issue here for years to come. What's your vibe on the on the Dobbins Acres comparison, and whether or not you think Zeke has been helping them in recruiting? Well, yeah, I mean, I think there's no question Zeke is helping them in recruiting. It's kind of like, you know, while, while uh, I mean, it was like USC a few years back when they had Reggie Bush and Lundell White. I mean, that that, that was a, a good run. They just kept getting five star after five star on the recruiting trail. I think Alabama did it a little bit. You know, they've had obviously some good backs. They haven't necessarily been the best in the pros, but. They've been producing good backs, and I think Ohio State obviously has had great college backs in Carlos Hyde and Ezekiel Elliott under Urban Meyer. And then, you know, obviously there's a great tradition already. There was, a, you know, there's been some great running backs at Ohio State already. Before them, the Beanie Wells, the Eddie Georges, the Archie Griffins, I mean, Keith Byers, if you want to consider him a running back or whatever. Um, you know, and, and even guys like Boom Heron and, and, and Antonio Pittman, they, you know, they make the league and, and bounce around for a little bit. So there was already a great running back tradition. Then you have these guys coming in and, and dominating, or you know, well, Zeke's dominating. Carlos Hyde's doing the best he can in San Francisco. If he was on a better team, he would absolutely be dominating in a, in a game that's that's more passer, you know, favoring the passer in, in today's NFL. And sure. you have a guy like Zeke who's who's kind of bringing back the running, 
the old school running game and running attack and, and helping Dallas to the to the league's best record and you know it's just uh it's 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 great marketing for Ohio State and um you know I, I think you know as far as JK Dobbins and Cam Akers goes uh I I don't I think they're both amazing players and I, I, I think you said the Zeke thing and I was thinking about it. It's like when Zeke was recruited everyone was like, Oh he's he's a really nice player but we want, you know, whoever else in this class and I think it's going to be really similar with J.K. Dobbins. I agree with you, Dan. I think I think he's going to come. I think he's going to be a great fit for Ohio State. I think it, it's hard to be Zeke. I don't want to say J.K. Dobbins is going to be one of the all-time greats at Ohio State, but he sure has that potential. And I think people in a few years are going to look back and be like, thank God we got J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I just – I'm more a fan these days of guys who are in that mold – I understand Akers is a tremendous athlete and a little bit of a bigger guy. I just don't like the bigger targets. I like a little more more of a shifty guy. And that was, I mean, listen, it was it was a choice between, it was not exactly a rock and a hard place if we're choosing between Dobbins and Akers. But um, I just happen to be a Dobbins guy. We appreciate Alex stopping by. And like I said, 2018 updated 24, top 247 sports composite. Alex has got a complete breakdown of that coming out later today. We appreciate him stopping by. Have a great one, Buck Tunners.